gentlemen, here's Frankie Howard. Thing to leave on my stool. Look at that. Oh, blimey. Strawberry jam and peanut butter. <laughs> Must have insides like blast furnaces, some people. <laughs> that was deliberate. That was deliberate. Almost left it deliberate. I know I left that here. Don't you worry. I know. He was hoping I would sit on it. He's the same man who scraped his spaghetti bolognese in my hat last week. <laughs> yes, spaghetti. And of course, I put this hat on his hat and realise it. I took my hat off. I looked just like Charlie Drake. Always, oh dear, well, I felt good in it. You'll say, it's a vendetta, you know. No, it's a vendetta. One of the carpenters. Mm. Well, no, you see. He resents the fact that I earn more money than he does. Because I see his point. Because I resent the fact that the makeup girls earn more money than I do. But I mean, I don't go around prevaricating. <laughs> what did I say? <laughs> well, you know what I mean. Yeah. No, but I mean, you see, I tell you what I blame. I mean, I blame. I tell you something. I blame the producer. I do, honestly, because it's his fault. He's lost control. He's got no discipline. No, I'm sorry, he hasn't. <laughs> no, he lets them all do as they want. You know, it's ridiculous. My, I personally, I think he's lost interest in the show. Because, no, <laughs> mind you, didn't have much to start with, come to that, but, no, well, ah, no. You see, when the show was first mooted, and oh, it was mooted, <laughs> it was the long, longest moot that I had for a long time. But, the you know, man in charge, you know, what's his name, the man, you know, runs the, you know, the thing. Well, he got the producer upstairs in his office, and he said, um, Wood, that's the producer's name, Wood. Mind you, I think most of it's between his ears. <laughs> <laughs> so, he said, Wood. He said, I wonder, Wood. Wood, would you uh, undertake to produce the new Frankie Howard show? So this producer, Wood, said, is that an order, sir? <laughs> now, I'm sorry, but does that sound to you like a man who's bubbling over with enthusiasm for the job? Because I know what you're saying. You're saying, how does Frankie Howard have the temerity, let alone the source, to talk about the producer like that when he's upstairs in the control box directing the show? Well, in fact, he's not. Now he's up there, but he's not listening. Of course he's not listening. <laughs> I could have slipped in a couple of Lawrence Harveys and a David Bailey by now. He would never... <laughs> no, but still, no, he's a... You know, he's a it, I don't say anything. I don't cause trouble. I don't think it's worth it, do you? Because, I mean, well, being in the BBC, you see, being in the BBC, it's very much like being in prison. The better behaved you are, the quicker you get out. <laughs> no, you see, I've done three shows up to now, and I've got three more do. And with a bit of luck, I might get one of these off for good behaviour, so I'm keeping <laughs> quiet. But, uh, hello, look, he's put the earphones on now. <laughs> don't say anything, don't say anything. Well, <laughs> how are you? Are you? Yes, good. Yes, oh, I'm fine. Yeah, well, you know, you know, I have the aches and pains, but nothing much, because I, it's mostly nerves with me. Hmm, yes, I do get nervy. Hmm. Well, I think you do, you know, living on your own, don't you? <laughs> I say living on my own, because I've got me, I've got me goldfish. But, um, they're not very demonstrative, are they, goldfish? <laughs> you can't really get close to a goldfish, can you? It's not much company. When you open the door, come home at night, you know, they don't leap out of their bowl and lick you, do they? <laughs> Still, after all, I mean, they've got their own lives to lead. I can't burn them with my worries. But I think loneliness is a terrible thing, you know. Oh, I do, especially when you're on your own. I mean, at night times. No, no, don't. No, please. Don't mock. Mocking? Who's mocking? No, but I mean, I think night times are the worst, don't you? I mean, I think it's a terrible thing to be in bed on your own. No, I mean, to, no, no, I mean, to be on your own, in bed. To be on your own bed. In, well, it's... Sitting in a chair, it's just as bad. And I, I know I've always said, you're better off on your own, but still, you see, I was young there when I said that, full of bravado. Because I think when you're young, you don't need people so much, do you? But I think when you, you know, sort of come to a... You know, when you sort of approach a more... When you reach a kind of a more... Or when you're getting past it, let's face it. You need somebody, don't you? Well, you know what I mean. Someone to have a good moaning in the morning. Someone to... Give you a good excuse for not going home at night. And, oh, it must be marvellous to have someone to keep away from. But uh, I've always been, I've always been lonely, you know. 
Mm. I've always been a shrinking violet. <laughs> shrinking, Mrs. Shrinking. <laughs> Full of sympathy. Look at that. She laughing her head off. Sweet to mop the afflicted dear. Mind you, I don't want you to think I'm in my wheelchair yet. Oh, no. Oh, no. The dog end isn't out completely. Oh, no. <laughs> There's still a few puffs left in it, but... You see, it's not that. It's, the thing is, it's more mental with me. It's more mental. I mean, it's, I've, you know, it, I'm beginning to feel lonely. It's beginning to get on top of me, because a couple of days ago, I was in my bed-sitting room, sitting on the bed, and, on, and it suddenly came home to me. It suddenly came home to me. I thought, oh, I was depressed. I never felt so bad. Do you know, for one minute, I was seriously considering the gas oven. But that was no good, it was no good, because only one of those tiny bachelor ones. It's a hard enough job getting your foot in. <laughs> And I said to myself, Francis, is it, this is not the answer, not the coward's way out. Pull yourself together, you blithering fool. As I often talk to myself like that, you know. <laughs> okay, what I say to myself, no. I give myself a right lashing sometimes. I said, Francis, you are still young. Now get out into the world and find yourself a mate, mate. There's a lot of lonely people in this world. How do they get them? They advertise. They advertise. So. I went round to the Continental News Agents and I looked at his adverts. <laughs> Very funny, aren't they all? Very funny. Most of them don't most of them don't offer friendship so much as discipline. <laughs> lots of lots of stern governesses advertising. Oh, most odd. But anyway, in the end I decided to contact a Lonely Hearts Bureau. And there's one uh, pinned up on the wall, the address on the wall, at the end of my street. It's Janice Goodbody, personal introductions. So I put my pride to one side and made an appointment and went round to see her. <laughs> Excuse me, <clears throat> I'm looking for uh, a Janice Goodbody. How do you do? <laughs> Beg your pardon? Well, that's me. I'm Janice Goodbody. Oh. Limited. Well, I should think you must be. <laughs> Very limited. I beg your pardon. I'm sorry, I was expecting to see a lady. Oh, yes, they all do. I've been Janice Goodbody since I left the army. Oh. <laughs> Was it painful? I bought this uh, company with my gratuity. You see, I didn't want to change the name ah, because of the goodwill. I understand. Yes, of course, the company, yes. yes I'm sorry, yes. Now, if you'd like to sit down there, yes. make yourself comfortable. Yes, thank you very much. Tell me all your troubles. Oh. You'll find me a very sympathetic listener. Oh, I'm sure, because you've got a kind face. Thank, thank you, you. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um. <laughs> One feels such a nana, doesn't one? <laughs> come along, come along. There's, there's no need to be embarrassed. No. All right, then. Well, it's like this, Janice. <laughs> you, don't, uh, you don't mind if I call you Janice, do you? Well, no. Not in here, I don't. But uh, <laughs> if we meet on the streets, it's Jocelyn. Jocelyn? <laughs> I think he's better off with Janice, don't you? Uh, well... Um, I wrote to you last week. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I remember. Let me have a look through the file here. Yes. Oh, yes, now. Are you, uh, are you, uh, disillusioned of Exeter? No, no, no. Past it of Hounslow? Dead. <laughs> Frustrated of, uh... No, no, no. Well, who are you, then? Shy but sexy of Wallum Green. <laughs> I see. Oh, just a minute. I think I might have your letter here. Yes, here we are. Ah, yes, thank you. Yes, uh, <coughs> see now. <clears throat> I hope he's going to read it out loud. <laughs> well? Well, we can't guarantee all this, you know. What do you mean by that? A cup of tea in bed of a morning isn't too much to ask, is it? Well, I'm a bona fide businessman. Yes, and my fides are as bona as yours, mate. <laughs> so now then... The sole aim of the Janice Goodbody Bureau is to bring together lonely hearts of opposite sexes so that in the fullness of time they will achieve happiness, 
and contentment, respect and friendship, a mutual comfort, a, a union of consummate beauty. Yes, <laughs> I suppose you could put it that way. <laughs> and a price not to exceed three pounds ten an introduction. Three pounds ten just to say hello, girl? Plus seven and six per subsequent meeting, 30 shillings on the announcement of the engagement, 10 guineas on celebration of the wedding stakes, and uh, a charge, uh, a, a penalty clause of five guineas if you decide to turn it in halfway through. Isn't it romantic? <laughs> and you give green shield stamps. <laughs> There is another way. Oh. We have uh, a special 50 guinea all-in voucher. 50 guinea? Yes, this entitles you to a look through the book and a go at any 40 from 80. <laughs> is that their ages? No, certainly not. No, no, no. Uh, this, is, uh, this represents the cream, you see, the cream oh. of the Bureau. Ah. Just a few, a few samples. I see. Mm. Yes. Oh, a bunny girl. Judging by our ears. <laughs> Ooh, this is a good one of you, isn't it? Oh, no idea, you're a wrestler, look. I don't know how that got in there. Oh, I beg your pardon. <laughs> oh. So, this is the cream, is it? Yes, yes. Yes, well, it's been standing a bit too long, I think. <laughs> I'm not paying you 50 guineas for rubbish like that. I've got a bigger book of stuff like that out on my own. Now, I want something special. I'm looking for something more Elizabeth Taylory or even Ursula Andressy. All right, well, I'll have a look. No, don't bother. If you have to have a look, it means you haven't got one. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't think it's worth the expense. expense. I don't. Expense? How can you count the cost when in those drawers over there may be the very girl you're looking for? <laughs> I never saw anybody come in. Where? <laughs> oh, in the, uh, the filing cabinet. I beg your pardon. You, yes, you're right. I've been lonely too long, yes. All right, I'll go on with it then. All right, well, then, let, let's get down a few particulars. Yes. Now, if I know the sort of type that you are and the sort of type that you're looking for, mm -hmm. I may be able to make a few suggestions. Yes, 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 yes. I understand. Well, take it. Ask anything you like. Anything at all. I've nothing, nothing to hide. All right, well, yes. here we go, then. How old are you? <laughs> I said, how old are you? I heard what you said. Now, come along, please. Come along, come along now. 32. <laughs> 32 and a bit. Well, what's the bit? Well, I don't know. That's what I've come here for. <laughs> Um, and what is your religion? Uh, well, is sun worshipper all right? <laughs> no, it is not. Oh, well, put down Methodist then. Right. Put down Methodist, yes. Methodist, yes. And what are your politics? Oh, yes. Oh, <laughs> politics, very strong. Oh, certainly. I'm a raving don't know. I never have been. <laughs> Always, isn't it? <laughs> Medical history? Oh, confused. Utterly confused. <laughs> You see, some people say I've had it, other people say I haven't had it. And have you had it? Not lately, no. <laughs> Tell me, is there, is there any, um, is there any insanity in your family? Oh, no, not much. I mean, nothing, nothing to write home about, you know. I see. Mm. Uh, any, any particular hobbies? Well, actually, I used to collect jam jar labels. Did you really? Yeah, well, I packed it in now because the album, I couldn't open the album, you see, it was too steep. <laughs> um, so now I just confine myself to early Byzantine music, Mexican Indian pottery and bingo. <laughs> well, that seems to be all in order. Now, tell me now, have you any particular preference for the type of partner you're looking for? I mean, do you like them blonde, brunette, redhead, tall, short, slim, well-built? Yes. <laughs> Well, uh, I think that's as much as we can do for the moment. All right. Uh, oh, there is a... Uh, I don't like to have to bring this up, but... Uh, have you a... Uh, have you a, a police record? A what? <laughs> have you a police record? Uh, oh, ah, yes, that one. Inspector Barlow singing Tea for Two, you know. <laughs> Very good. I'm so... What a silly Billy. I'm sorry. You mean, have I ever been nicked? Well... Well, once I did commit a minor infringement. Really? What was that? So, no, look, he's getting interested now the dirt's coming out. Look, look, look. 
Uh, yeah, well, I'm sorry, I can't tell you. It was too shameful. Now, I come on now, please. You. you must tell me now. now what was it now? What was it? What was I've it? got him going now. now I've got him on, going now. I insist. Now, Janice! Janice! <laughs> Janice! Stop twitching. For goodness sake, good grief, woman, control yourself. <laughs> Sorry, I had to beg your pardon. Oh, I should think so, too, Janice. Carried away. Oh. No, you were saying? Well, I tell you what, it was a couple of years ago when I was 18. Oh, yes. Yes, you see. <laughs> <laughs> I took this girl in the woods. Yes, yes. And the sun was hot, and the blood was rising, and she was very beautiful. Yes, go on, go on. I know it was madness, but I couldn't refuse well, her. Of course you couldn't. You no. see, I, I struggled, I fought against it, she pleaded, she begged me. Go on, go on. I didn't have to do it. I didn't want to do it, but she, she begged me to. In the end, I did what she wanted, and I got arrested. And what was the charge? Scrumping. <laughs> I was caught red-handed with a jersey full of conference pears. <laughs> there, now you know all. Oh, really, now, please, please don't ever do that again. Oh, I shan't. I've never touched a pear since, I swear. <laughs> All right, well, I think that's all for the moment now, but if you have a, if you happen to have a photograph of yourself, you could let me have, and then I could, you know what I mean, punt it around and see if there's any interest. Yes, well, ta, well, do it the best you can. Give it a, have a good punt. <laughs> have a good punt. Yes, I, I tell you something else, I should be very, very grateful if you could try and fix up something up for me before the winter's finished, because yeah. it's either that or installing central heating, you see. <laughs> and, I mean, I can't go much longer the way I am. Where's this photograph now? Here we are. Well, I'm sorry, it's the only one I've got. It was taken last year when I was playing Richard III. You see, tell them that the nose and the hump are both removable, oh. don't they? <laughs> well, awfully good, isn't it? Yes, well, I think that's all, my friend. Thank you. And welcome to our happy circle. I shall be getting in touch with you very shortly. And don't worry, I feel sure that your days of loneliness are numbered. Ah, oh, thank you, Janice. Not You're so very so kind. Not so thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, excuse me, am I intruding? Uh, uh, let me introduce you. This is Mr. Shy but Sexy of Wallam Green, and uh, this is Yvonne. I'll take it. <laughs> Don't bother to wrap it up. Ooh, it's what service? I shall recommend you to the Consumers' Council. Come, my dear. Now, Yvonne happens to be my wife. Wouldn't you believe it? Just like my butcher, always keeps the best bit for himself. <laughs> Well, I'm very sorry. Goodbye. I uh, don't go out of the office like that. It's uh, bad for business. Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, blimey, Jocelyn. You'd have to earn your money there. Well, what do you think, dear? Hmm? Oh, I think he's better looking in there. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I couldn't sit still. I was pacing up and down the room like a caged tiger, waiting for Janice Goodbody to phone. Would he find me somebody? What was she like? Would she fancy me? Then on the fourth day, a message came through. Come and get it. <laughs> yes, he found me one. A Miss Beryl Cuttlebunt. Yes. <laughs> Beryl Cuttlebunt, yes. He said that she was desperate to get married. I thought I'm not surprised with a name like that. <laughs> anyway, he said she'd seen my particulars and she was anxious to meet me. Oh, my cup runneth over. At last, the days of holding my own hands in the pictures were over. So Janice arranged an assignation. Or for all those who have failed in their O-levels, a chance to have a quick butchers at her boat race. <laughs> she suggested that we meet in the modern art section of the Tate Gallery. I thought, good, that's free for a start. A mum had to spend the three pounds I'd drawn out of the post office. So I tore up my central heating booklets, and then I went down to meet <laughs> him. Are you a Miss Beryl Cuttlebunt? No! Well, thank God for that. <laughs> She's worse in the photographs. Um, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't suppose for one moment you are, but could you by any chance be a Miss Beryl Cuttlebunt? Yes, I am. Yeah, I'm sorry, yes. 
Pardon? I am Beryl Cattleband. Oh! <laughs> Must be something wrong with her. Um, would you permit me to introduce myself? I am Francis A. Howard, Esquire. Oh, don't touch me. I, I can't stand men touching me. Didn't I tell you? No. <laughs> I always get them, don't I? Well, I'm very, very sorry to have troubled you. I'll leave you to your own device. No, please. Device. No, 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 no. Don't go. I'm terribly sorry. Do forgive me. I'm a little overwrought. Oh. You know, I've been standing here staring at this painting for over two hours. Yes, it's enough to turn anybody off. I know. <laughs> it's fantastically brilliant. Is it? I think it's the most awe-inspiring painting I've ever seen. Oh. Uh, don't tell me you're another of these Philistines. Oh, no, no, no. I'm British. I was born here. <laughs> Mind you, we have a few living in our street, but they don't interfere with me, so I mean, I don't interfere no with them. No good. I can't look at it anymore. It's just too much. No. Oh, I really think I must sit down. By all means. Uh, shall we take a seat over I here? I told you before, don't touch me. Don't ever touch me. God, oh, blimey, it was only your elbow. <laughs> that's, not an, that's not an erotic zone, is it? <laughs> Madam, I don't see any point in pursuing this matter any further. Look, let's both ask for our seven and six back and call it a day, shall we? Oh, no, 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 please. I, look, I, I don't want you to go. I like you. Yes, but I mean, I, I don't see the point because I'm only human. I can't wander through the rest of my life with my hands in my pockets, can I? You see, you, see, I mean? you must give me time. Time, because yes. Because that was the trouble with all the others. They never gave me time. Ah, time, yes. Well, how much time would you need? Because I'm pushy on a bit now, you see. <laughs> and I mean, when you do get round to it eventually, I would like to be able to cope. <laughs> Try and understand. Yeah, well, I'm trying, Just yes. Just be kind to me. Kind. Don't rush me. Ah, oh, all right. Um, would you care to sit down slowly? <laughs> I'll lead the way in a column. <laughs> <laughs> this is nice, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> um, would you, what, would you care for a sweet? Oh. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Have you put anything in these? Pardon? <laughs> a drug with a hypodermic syringe so it can't be noticed? I've heard about filthy swine like you. You go around, tracking girls so that you can do what you will with them. Is that what you're doing? Madam, these are black currant bonbons. <laughs> One and tuppence a quarter. I've been sucking these for years. All they've given me is a black tongue and a toothache. Now look, if you don't want it, flick it back in the bag. I've never seen anything like it, have you? I am sorry. You must think I'm rather strange. Oh, no. Oh, no. Not at all. <laughs> what a funny woman. <laughs> Tell me, are you lonely? I mean, really lonely. I mean, desperately, indescribably lonely. Well, I'm on my target. That's what you mean. <laughs> yes. I think Jean-Paul Sartre summed it up best in his Chemin de la Liberté. Did he? Yes. yes. <laughs> uh, Dr. Finlay's case book touched on the same thing last week. <laughs> And what about Juliet Greco? Oh, yes. What about Juliet Greco? Yes. Don't you find her chanson painfully true? Uh, well, not really. <laughs> Mainly because I can't understand a blind word she says. <laughs> but uh, here, um, here, that, uh, that Sandy Shaw gets me going. I think it's the, those bare feet that do it. Poor soul. When she's singing, her feet must be like two blocks of ice. Because <laughs> mind you, that, that reminds me, Juliet Greco used to wear bare feet, didn't she? Yeah. Of course, is it? That's why they're all so mournful. I mean, cold feet and splinters, it can't help much, can it? You are so understanding. Oh, I try to be, thank you. Um, do you like poetry? Uh, oh, yes, yes, I love poetry. Oh, good, that's oh. something to bring us closer together, oh, then. Good. You know, I am <laughs> mad about Stendhal, Baudelaire, Rilke. Yes. Who's your favourite? Now, come on, let's talk. Who's your favourite? Uh, Cyril Fletcher. <laughs> Yes. No, I, I don't think I know him. Choose. Give me some of him. Give me some. Uh, yes. Now let me let me choose. Let me choose a nice stanza. Yes. yes. Uh, this is the tale of Daisy Lagole, who caught her toes stuck in the plug hole. <laughs> and came 
complete with ladders. You are the most ignorant man I've ever met. Why? You know nothing. What is nothing. Going? My God, they told me you were interested in early Byzantine music and Mexican Indian pottery. Yes, and bingo. Oh, <laughs> but then talk about them. Oh, well, look, legs 11. When you say legs 11, it means number 11, oh, you see. Come and... on. Let's what? communicate. Yes. I mean, right. it is what it's all about, isn't it? Oh. Now, come on, let's communicate. Yes. Oh, you touched me. I said never to touch me. Oh, I didn't touch you. You touched me. Oh. It's a cheeky cat, isn't she? <laughs> Look at my coat, it's all disheveled. Who's that? I don't know what expected of me. I thought it would be a simple means of, hello girl, what about it and off? <laughs> I wonder if that other woman's still hanging about. <laughs> she looks as though she might be grateful. I failed again, haven't I? I'm... You're the 85th man the agents have sent me and it always ends in failure. Not going to this time. I've made a decision. Have you? Yes. Sit down. Oh, I will. Thank you very much. What Make the... love to me. Yes. <laughs> Make love to me. What now? Yes, here and now. What do you mean? In broad daylight? In the tank gallery? Yes. Oh, I couldn't do that. <laughs> Old Harry would turn his grave. We can't use his gallery. <laughs> Is his gallery for things like that? No, let me go! Don't touch me, please! Kiss me, violently and passionately. Madam, madam, oh naughty madam, please! <laughs> this is madness! Oh, this is worse than Peyton, please! Please! Kiss me! Uh, Kiss me! Pardon? Bite me! What? Bite me! Oh, I can't be, I'm a vegetarian! <laughs> Please, unhand me. Don't spurn me. I'm not... Please, don't spurn me. I don't want I to mean, spurn you. I mean, you just don't know what it's costing me to do this. I know it'll cost me for copper comes in and catches us, please. Look, please, unhand me, madam, would you? Please, don't go. Please, don't kiss me. Just kiss me. You see, when Picasso painted those different hues, he came... Ah! Matt is a keeper, madam. Matt is a keeper, sir. Good afternoon. I'm uh, sorry to trouble you, Miss Cuddlebunt, but there's a crocodile of school children coming round soon. May I suggest that the uh, Turner room may be more comfortable? Hey, thank you, George. Not at all, Miss. <laughs> Best of luck, sir. Yes, I think... I don't understand. I think I'm going to need... Word of encouragement, sir. Yes? You're doing... A lot better than the other 84. Am I? Oh, yes. I think you're in there, sir, with a very, very definite chance. Do you think so? We'd all like to see her settle down, sir. Would you? Someone nice. Oh. Someone like yourself. Oh, you mustn't. It's very, very kind of you. Keep at it, sir. Oh. Conqueror. Oh. Conqueror? Yes, sir. I mean, she's such a funny woman. I mean, one minute it's don't touch me, the next minute it's she wants me to bite her, of all things. And she's no artistic sense. She doesn't like Lucy Lago or anything like that, you see. She's like a wild prairie pony, yes. sir. Yes. You've got a breaker. Breaker. Yes. You can do it, sir. Do you? You've definitely got it. Oh. <laughs> I suppose it's a gift. I, I, I don't know what to say, really. Darling, come on. Don't keep me waiting. There's no one in here. Get in there, sir. Break her! By heavens, you're right. I'll tame that proud spirit. <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> now, you may be interested, interested to know that the whole episode will be seen as a future edition of Candid Camera. Yes, Candid Camera. It was all a put-up job. I have never been so humiliated in all my life. When I think of the things I said and did, I'm being photographed all the time. Honestly, I made a right anus of myself. Oh, wait, 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 wait I should have known. Beryl Cuttlebunt. No one would go around with a name like Beryl Cuttlebunt. And she was an actress. 
But she wasn't acting the other night because I called round to see her. And she still wouldn't let me touch her. No. Well, I was so angry. I really was. I mean, taking advantage of a lonely man like that. I went down to the bureau and I complained, you know. Oh, yes. But you see, they were in on it. Oh, Janice was falling about. Oh, that was very funny, yes. But in the end, they promised they'd make amends. They uh, offered me a free go with somebody else. You see, so I met it this morning. The central heating men are moving in next week. <laughs> she was well over 60, she was. Mind you, she tried to hide it, but really, cool race boots and, and a jean shrimp and dresses. I mean, they're not right, are they, really? Anyway, I took my name off the list and got my money back, and I'm, gonna, I'm not going to bother anymore. Oh, no, I'm reconciled now. If it comes, it comes. But I'm not going to chase after it, I should say so. <laughs> oh, well, there we are, that's it. I suppose I'd better go home now and feed the goldfish. <laughs> now, I... Oh. <laughs> who put here? Who put that here? Now, come on, own up, who put this here? Lemon curd and banana. <laughs> come on now, someone left that here. Whose is this? Lemon, lemon curd and banana. Come on, own up. Who is it? Lemon curd. Look, I don't think that's very funny. I'm so...